In this video, I'm going to walk through the electrolysis required practical. I've already got a video where I explain all the theory behind this practical, so it's definitely a good idea to go and watch that one first, and I've placed a link to get to it here. In the theory video, I predicted what products would be formed at the electrodes for the electrolysis of each ionic compound in the practical, and here's that prediction table. Now I'm just going to alter it slightly, so that for this practical video we can note down some observations and check the predictions. So this table is showing the different aqueous solutions down the side and we have two main columns, one concerning the negative electrode and one concerning the positive electrode. For each electrode I've got a column for the ions that are attracted to the electrode, observations that we'll note down as we go and the element formed which are already predicted and we can check those during this video. The ions present are based upon the ionic compound. So for the first one we have copper chloride, so that means we have copper and chloride ions. Then for each of these we also have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions because the ionic compound is in water. If you don't understand that go and watch the theory video. So let's get started with the electrolysis of copper 2 chloride. First of all, you need to fill up a 100 milliliter beaker halfway with the electrolyte solution. Place in the electrodes and make sure they're not touching, and then you need to attach those to a power source. Now I've connected my circuit up so that the negative electrode is on the left and the positive electrode is on the right. If we zoom in on this, you can see there's fizzing at the positive electrode. This means a gas is being produced. Here I'm taking damp blue litmus paper and I'm holding it by the gas. We can see that the paper has become bleached, which means the gas is chlorine. Now I'm turning off the power source and we can take a look at the negative electrode. Here you can see that copper has been produced and it's coating the electrode. At this point in the practical you fill in your results table. Now we've observed that copper is formed on the negative electrode and we observed fizzing at the positive electrode which indicates a gas had been produced. The blue litmus paper was bleached which shows that the gas produced was chlorine. This matches up with our predictions from the previous video. Now I'm going to repeat the same procedure for copper sulphate. So you pour copper sulphate into a beaker, place in the electrodes, making sure they're not touching, and connect your power source. Again, there is fizzing at the positive electrode, indicating a gas is being given off. This time, damp blue litmus paper is unchanged in colour. On the left is the previous positive result for chlorine, and on the right, the litmus paper has not been bleached, which means the gas given off this time is not chlorine. If we disconnect the power, we can look at the negative electrode. Again, we can see copper has been produced. So now let's fill in our observations. We have copper forming on the electrode and we also saw fizzing at the positive electrode. This time the damp blue litmus paper didn't change colour so it wasn't chlorine and actually what we predicted from the previous video was correct, it's oxygen which formed at the positive electrode. This time fill half a beaker with sodium chloride solution. Add the electrodes and connect to a battery. This time we can see fizzing at both electrodes, meaning a gas has been produced at both electrodes. We do not produce sodium as it is more reactive than hydrogen and it stays in solution. We can see that blue litmus paper is bleached by the gas produced at the positive electrode, which means it's chlorine. 
So this time we saw fizzing at both electrodes. At the negative electrode it was hydrogen, and at the positive electrode it was chlorine. The final compound is sodium sulfate. Again, fill up the beaker halfway, put in the electrodes, and connect it to a power source. As before, there is fizzing at both electrodes, which means there is a gas being given off at both electrodes. We do not see sodium formed at the negative electrode because it's more reactive than hydrogen and it stays in the solution. Here we can see blue litmus paper is unchanged by this gas because it's not chlorine. So filling in our observations, we have fizzing at both electrodes. At the negative electrode, there was no formation of sodium, there was a gas, so that was hydrogen. At the positive electrode, we saw that blue litmus paper was not bleached, so it was not chlorine given off, and since there was no halide ion present in that solution, the gas given off was oxygen. I hope this video was useful. I have lots more practical walkthroughs and theory videos on my channel, so go and check those out.